Ready? What's the first line? Photograph oh, yeah. service can be tricky. <laughs> I got it, I got it, I got it. Photographing a service can be tricky business. Obviously you wanna get a good shot, but it is not difficult to become a distraction. On top of that, you're often dealing with less than ideal lighting, swaths of empty seats to avoid, and the hundreds of ridiculous faces that your pastor manages to make over the course of a sermon. It is easy to feel like an unwelcome visitor when shooting a service, but it doesn't need to be that way. Today, we're gonna to cover how to effectively shoot a church service without looking like an idiot. Welcome to Black Bar. Hi, I'm Caleb, and today we're gonna to talk about the do's and the don'ts of church service photography. We're gonna go step by step, focusing on shooting before the service, during worship, during the sermon, and the altar call, so you're prepared for every step of the process. Before we even pick up a camera, however, it's important to understand what your goals are. In most cases, it's not a good idea to shoot a church service like a wedding. When shooting a wedding, a photographer's goal is usually to capture a little bit of everything. The dress, the venue, the ceremony, the reception, simply put, there's almost definitely too many things happening in your church on a Sunday for you to photograph them all effectively. The good thing is you get another opportunity to shoot every single week. Figure out what it is you're trying to accomplish. Do you want to communicate the warm community at your church? Maybe powerful worship, good teaching, diversity. Pick two or three of these things and focus on them entirely. Understanding the goal of your photography will impact what you shoot, when you shoot, and where you shoot. In addition, you should be thinking about where these photos are going to end up. For example, if you're taking photos with the intention of using them as backgrounds for slides, you need to make sure that you're leaving extra empty space for text. If you're covering a special event, you'll want to capture smiling faces and diversity. If you're taking pictures to spice up your Instagram stories, you need to be shooting in portrait, not landscape. Again, the more information you have about where your goals are prior to shooting, the better your chances of success. Also, I'd highly suggest identifying your photographers with a badge or a lanyard or a t-shirt. That symbol of legitimacy not only makes the photographer's job easier, but it helps your congregation understand that they're not being photographed by some random creeps off the street. Trust me, their peace of mind is worth the extra time and effort. So let's run through a typical church service. First is pre-service. If your goal is to capture community at your church, this is your prime time. This is likely your longest opportunity to find people talking and laughing and enjoying the fellowship of others. When it comes time to shoot, I'd recommend using a longer zoom lens and shooting candidates from a distance. You're likely to get more natural faces and poses from people who don't know they're being photographed. In fact, when possible, I try to shoot with a bunny. Although they have a camera as well, I often use them as a sort of body shield. We'll pretend that we're having a conversation with my buddy facing me, and I'll be shooting over their shoulder towards our intended subject. You can also send them out to distract the subject by having them look towards them for a photo while you get a more natural photo from out of sight. Yes, I know how creepy this sounds. Yes, it doesn't help that I'm six foot four and wear almost exclusively black. However, if you're shooting from far enough away, you're quick, and you manage to avoid eye lines, you can really get some great natural shots. If you do decide to get in closer for more intimate shots, tell your intended subject that you're with the church and ask them if it's okay to photograph them. Be friendly, ask politely, and thank them when you're done. Try to shoot as fast as possible as no one likes getting their photo taken, especially when they weren't expecting it. They are doing you a favor, be sure to express your gratitude. Also, in my experience, people often ask where the photos are going to end up. Having a good answer can mean the difference between you looking like a creep or a pro. Again, know what your goals are before you begin shooting. If anyone ever asks you not to shoot them or to delete a photo of them, just comply. Although you are well within your legal rights to take photos of any adult that you please, it's simply not worth the potential damage of that visitor's perception of your church's staff or volunteers. While we're on the subject of legality, I should probably mention the minefield that is photographing minors under the age of 13. Simply put, in America, you cannot publish any photo of an identifiable minor without permission from a parent or a guardian. This rule is often broken at churches, but there are serious legal consequences for organizations that don't comply with COPPA, or the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. We'll likely do a video entirely on this subject eventually, but I'd suggest doing further research on the topic if you're looking to take photos at your church's children's or youth ministries. Second, let's talk about worship. Funnily enough, I found that most congregants are actually relatively lenient when it comes to worship photography. 
In most situations, the congregation is standing, making it easier to move around the sanctuary without disrupting the service. In addition, there's lots of noise happening, so you don't have to worry about the sound of a constant barrage of camera shutter noises. That being said, your biggest issue in this situation is likely going to be light, or the lack thereof. Chances are, the stage is very well lit, but the house is very dark. Attempting to get a photo with both exposed well is nearly impossible without incredibly expensive gear or control of the lighting. If your camera can, I'd highly suggest shooting in RAW instead of JPEG. You will need a proper photo editing program like Photoshop or Lightroom to open the file, but shooting in RAW allows you to take advantage of your camera's full depth of dynamic range. You see, cameras measure light in units called stops. One of the biggest differentiating features for cheap versus expensive cameras is the amount of stops of brightness a camera can handle in a single photo. For example, shooting a worship scene with low dynamic range would likely result in a properly exposed stage but completely black crowd. If you expose for the crowd, the stage would be entirely white. Every ounce of detail in the underexposed or overexposed portions is completely lost. If you do shoot in RAW with a camera with a higher dynamic range, however, you can pull a lot of those details back in post, giving you a much more interesting, professional photo. As a pro tip for shooting worship services, focus most of your energy on the very first and the very last song of the set. The first song is when you should be shooting the stage. In a typical service, the first song usually serves as a sort of energetic kickoff. The worship team should look the most alive during this track. In most of the services I've been to, however, it usually it takes a couple minutes for the congregation to loosen up. When the last song of the set comes on, it's time to turn the camera around. This is almost always the emotional peak of worship. Search for impassioned worshipers, raised hands if your church is into that kind of thing, and the like. However, be considerate. Don't go running around shoving your camera in the face of every person having a powerful worship experience. A good photo of a powerful moment should always be second in priority to the moment itself. Next is the sermon. Shooting the sermon is probably the most dangerous when it comes to being a distraction. The congregation is all sitting down, making it harder to move around discreetly, and unless you have an upset baby or two, the pastor is the only one speaking, making it very quiet. More than any other section, I highly suggest understanding what your goals are prior to shooting the sermon. You should be trying to get everything you can as fast as possible to avoid being an unnecessary distraction. If you're trying to get close-ups of your pastor preaching, try to find an empty seat towards the front as worship is coming to a close. If you're lucky, you'll be able to snag a front row seat and blend in with the crowd as they sit down. Chances are you don't need dozens of pictures of your pastor preaching this Sunday. In my experience, I usually ever only need one or two. Once you get a great shot from that angle, it's time to move. I'd suggest trying to wait until the audience is reacting to a section of the sermon. They could be laughing or clapping, shouting amen, whatever. The unrest will make it easier for you to slip out unnoticed. As another pro tip, if your pastor uses a microphone that they hold or a Bible or an iPad in their hand, try to shoot them from the side of the sanctuary that matches their occupied hand. In my experience, pastors will often use their free hand to gesture, regularly obscuring their face if you're shooting from the opposite side. Shooting their open side will leave their face unobstructed and make them feel more expressive and open. If instead you're trying to shoot the congregation or the entire sanctuary, the like have a different issue to contend with. Unless you're in the middle of a revival or you are in desperate need of an extra service or a new building, you will likely have the occasional empty seat. No church that I have ever shot for ever likes to see empty seats. You should be doing everything that you can to shoot from an angle that makes the sanctuary look the most full. If you're shooting with a wide lens, try to shoot at a 45 degree angle to the congregation. The diagonal angle of the crowd will help conceal empty spots. If you do have a longer zoom lens, try to find full, compact groups of people. You can shoot down through them to make the sanctuary look more full. This technique is often used in film to fill a space with only a few extras. So the sermon is coming to a close and it's time for the big leagues, the altar call. This is where you're most likely to feel the most uncomfortable shooting. Life transformation is happening. Tears are flowing. Emotions are high. The whole nine yards. More than any other time, you want to be invisible, but that's not really possible. 
altars are typically highly visible and dense with people and, in my experience, unpredictable flying raised hands. I've taken my fair share of worshipful slaps to the back of the head. Many churches that I've been to understandably ban the use of photography during the altar call. Like I said before, a good photo of a powerful moment should always be its second in priority to the moment itself. But I've got a secret. A secret that has allowed me to shoot hundreds of altar calls without ever being confronted by a disgruntled congregant. Worship while you work. Seriously. In addition to running the media marketing department in my church, I also happen to volunteer as a drummer on my worship team. When playing the drums on a Sunday, it takes a lot of mental acuity and concentration to do what I need to do. Arguably, there's more weight on my shoulders as a drummer in regards to the success of the service than a photographer. That being said, no one has ever told me not to worship while I play. Obviously, my mind and body are busy maintaining a beat and following the worship leader, but my spirit is engaging in worship. You see, worship is often used as a synonym for worship music, but that's really only a small portion of what it really is. Simply put, but photographing a service can and should be viewed as an act of worship. You're using the gifts and abilities God has given you to bless the body of Christ and to spread his name. That is important work. That's kingdom work. That's worship. While you're shooting an altar call or the sermon or worship or whatever, you should be participating in the service. Sing along with the music. Listen to the sermon. Pray for people at the altar as you photograph them. You won't be viewed as an outsider if you don't act like one. In my opinion, this is easily the most important piece of the puzzle for successfully photographing a church service. It's not always easy, but photographing a service well is an excellent way of communicating the culture of your church to your community. Remember to be respectful, keep your distance, and never forget why you're there in the first place. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Black Bar. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our podcast. We go a little bit more in depth into these conversations we have in the videos, kind of share our story of success and failure. In addition, be sure to join our Discord. We're in there all the time, interacting with other church media nerds, in general, helping each other get better. Remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time.